How did you come to discover your why then? So I um, it was I reached a point in my career where I had fallen out of love with my work. Um, superficially, my my life was good. You know, I owned my own business. We had amazing clients. We did amazing work. Doing what? What was I had business? a marketing consultancy? Yeah, um, in New York, and uh, I didn't want to wake up and do it anymore. I just was I was done. And was that a sudden realization or a dawning one? I mean, you know. These things always feel sudden, but they've been, you know, that's a slow boiling frog until you realize the water's boiling. Um, so the answer is, who knows? It, 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 it showed up, you know? Like, how long d does it take to feel depressed? I, you know, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Um, and I was deeply embarrassed feeling bad because I shouldn't. Look, look what I'm doing. Look at the things I'm getting to do. Like, I shouldn't be, you know, depressed or you know, not want to go to work. And so I kept it, all those negative feelings to myself, which really is stupid. Um, and the feelings got darker and darker and darker and they feed on each, they feed on themselves. And that's the problem with keeping negative feelings to yourself. They, they fester and grow. And it got to the point where I was in really a dark place, but all of my energy went into pretending that I was happier, more in control and more successful than I really felt. So nobody knew. Okay. Um, and uh, it wasn't until a very dear friend of mine came to me and said, there's something wrong. There's something different. I don't know what it is, but something's off. And I, for whatever reason, I, I opened up and came clean. And it was cathartic. You know, it was a weight lifted off my shoulders. And all of that energy that went into lying, hiding, and faking every day, I now had new energy, renewed energy to actually find a solution. Um, uh, I'll spare you the long, drawn-out story, but... I had already articulated this idea of the why and the golden circle to explain why some marketing worked and some marketing didn't. Okay. And it was the discovery of the human brain, the limbic brain and the neocortex, um, uh, which I learned at a dinner party. I was sitting next to somebody who their dad was a neuroscientist. I mean, it was just like polite conversation and like bells started going off. And I realized it didn't explain why marketing worked. It, dis it explained why people do what they do. And I realized this was my problem. I knew what I did. I knew how I did it, but I couldn't tell you why. That's what I needed to find. And I couldn't do it for myself. And so I brought in an outsider who had objectivity and took me through some sort of version of his, his process and mine um, that really helped. But the more important thing was I figured out how to help my friends find their why. Sure. And that's what I started doing. I started helping my friends find their why. But there's an element of your story there, and thank you for sharing it, that I think takes courage to do that, whether it was that friend of yours that has just spotted that something is off with you to ask you that the courage to open up and be honest and be vulnerable with them is something that I, I think, think doesn't get referred to enough. Thank you, but I disagree <laughs> because I think my friend had the courage, not me. You know, um, I think it's really hard when your friends say to you, there's something wrong and you go, no, everything's fine. And then they let it go or they're not even willing to say something's off. They just kind of, it's too uncomfortable. You know, we don't like discomfort. Discomfort. We certainly don't, don't like causing discomfort and we certainly don't want to create tension or a fight. And so we just leave it. And I think the courageous friends, the friends who truly, truly, truly love you are the ones who will lean into that tension and go, I don't care what you say and I know you're lying to me. I love you to death and I know something's wrong and I'm going to keep asking you until you tell me, you know? And more importantly, whatever it is, I got you. I love you. You're safe. I don't know what it is and I don't care what it is. Just know that I'm your partner and you are never alone. And the friend who helped me, that became the way we said I love you to each other. Um, we used to say you're never alone because that's how it all started. You know, she said to me, you're not alone here. Um, so I think the fr she had the courage to get me to open up and then I just stepped into the, the safe space. So if we accept that courage was present... For sure. There. For sure. What, the, <laughs> I so, just won't take the credit. Yeah. No, and <laughs> that's very noble of you. But I think the reason I'm asking that is because for anyone listening to this, Simon, I, I'm interested in you articulating what are the benefits of being prepared to ask these questions that yeah. are often un that go unanswered. Yeah, I mean, you know, human beings are, despite our own self-opinions, we're not that strong and we're not that smart. 
but in teams and groups were amazing. And so trying to solve your own life problems by yourself, I've got, a, I've got some really bad news. You can't, which is why addiction exists because I can't solve these problems myself. I can't overcome the stress myself. So I'm going to drink, you know, or I'm going to do something else that's harmful to myself, my family, and my relationships, as all addictions are. Whether you're addicted to your cell phone, addicted to alcohol, addicted to drugs, you're going to destroy your relationships. You're going to destroy yourself. Um, and there is tremendous value, and it does take courage, you're right, for somebody who loves you to say, I got you. I'm here, let's do this together. Or for you to call a friend and say, I, I think I'm struggling and and I think I can't do this alone. Can you help me? It's humiliating, but it is perhaps the single greatest lesson that any human being can learn, which is to say, I don't know and I need help. Um, and if you can learn that, um, and you can do it in the worst of times, you can do it all the time. You can do it with silly things. Um, and I, I, for me, I mean, I mean, for those who know my work, you know, I regularly call myself an idiot, you know, um, and I do think of myself as an idiot because I have no problem saying, I don't know, can somebody who knows who's smarter than me explain this to me? I, I'm under no false illusion that I have to present myself as the smartest person in the room because I'm not, you know, and where I'm good, I might know a sliver of something, but my goodness, everything else we're talking about, I know nothing. Um, and, um, and I think being comfortable with asking for help and saying, I don't know, um, it turns out we're surrounded by people who want to take care of us and help us, but they don't because they didn't think we needed it because we were too busy presenting ourselves as perfect so and having all the answers. So they just didn't, oh. but they would yeah. if we just asked. Um, and you know, I have a, I have a small group of friends where, you know, we, we have a deal and, you know, I have a couple of friends that are super senior, super high performing, um, by all traditional definitions. And I remember the first time one of us called the other and said, I'm stuck, which is really difficult to do because you want to look smart and strong to people who you respect and they're so smart and strong. Um, and I have one of my dearest friends, he's in the military, he's a, he's a senior officer in the U.S. Air Force, he's active duty still. And uh, um, I remember the first time he called me brother, which in the military is a big deal. You know, you and I have colleagues and coworkers, they have brothers and sisters. Um, and so they call each other brother and they call each other sister and it's an amazing thing. Um, and I remember the first time he said, all right, brother, I'll talk to you later. Or, Hey brother. And I was like, <gasps> like, that means the relationship was different now, you know? And he's a warrior. I mean, he's a, he's a, he's, he's a hardcore. He's an amazing human being. And when we get off. he'll say I love you you know or he'll text me and say I miss you not just miss you I miss you which is way more vulnerable you know and it's deeply human and he and I are you know we call each other and say I'm struggling or I'm stuck and sometimes it's business I just need your opinion but sometimes it's personal sometimes it's frustration you know can I talk to you I'm so freaking frustrated
Um, but to have to foster those relationships, and those relationships take a lot of work to get to. They don't just show up, and they do require risk. You know, at some point you open up a little bit. But to have those kinds of friendships, I think, are absolutely essential to being what we would call a high-performance human being. I don't think you can be high-performance by yourself. I don't think it exists. And anybody who does, is they're either not as high-performing as they think they are, or they are high-performing, but at tremendous cost. Um, they're lonely. They need pills to start the day. Um, they have other issues. They'll have health issues later in life. I think if you want to, if you choose to be quote unquote high performing by yourself, it comes at the, a cost that I think is not worth it.